this video, we're going to look at the ideal gas law and how we can apply it. We've already seen the simple gas laws, Boyle's law, Charles law, and Avogadro's law, and the four variables that they include for all gases. Remember, the gases can be described by the variables pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. Those are all four. So if we know three of those, we will know the fourth. Now, based on the equations, you'll notice that each of the laws was stated so that they equaled a constant value. Now, that's true if the other two variables were kept constant. For example, in Boyle's law, we've got the pressure and volume changing, but we're assuming that the moles and the temperature are remaining constant. Same thing with Charles and Avogadro's law. Now, if we take and combine these all into one equation, so we represent all of the variables that are involved, we'll get what we sometimes call the combined gas law in this format. Notice that we have all four variables and they equal a constant value. In this case though, this combined gas law, which we will now call the ideal gas law, is special in the sense that that constant value is true for all gases, no matter what. The pressure, volume, moles, and temperature, the ratio of all those together, will equal the same value for all gases. So we give K a new value and we call it R. And this R is called the universal gas constant. Again, because it's true for all gases. So it doesn't matter what gas you're using, this relationship of pressure and volume divided by the moles and temperature will equal a specific value. We can rearrange this equation to say PV equals NRT. Now the equation PV equals NRT, that the four variables have specific values or units that we must use. Pressure can be either atmospheres or millimeters of mercury. The pressure units for this can be anything, but these are the only two that we're going to use, and they're the most common ones used in chemistry. Volume must be in the units of liters. We measure the amounts of gases in moles, and the temperature, as we've seen before in the simple gas laws, must be in the units of Kelvin. The values for R, the universal gas constant with units, are going to be 0.08206 or 62.36. Now the 0 0.08206 is going to be used if your pressure is measured in atmospheres and the 62.36 will be used if you're measuring your pressure in millimeters of mercury. If you have other pressure units used, you need to convert to either one of these two. The ideal gas law is important for us because unlike gram to mole conversions that we have done in the past, Stoichiometry that's done for gases must be done using these four variables, pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. So let's see an example of how we can apply stoichiometry to this. If we have 5.65 grams of calcium carbonate, and we react that with hydrochloric acid, what volume of carbon dioxide will be collected at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.75 atmospheres? We have to state this pressure and temperature because when we're collecting gases, remember we have these four variables that we need to account for. The first thing we do, as we've always done in our stoichiometry problems, is to write out and balance a chemical reaction. Once we've done that, we can begin our stoichiometry, our conversions. Now, in all stoichiometry problems, even when we started with gram-mole conversions, we said that the first thing that must be done is to convert to the units of moles if you don't have the units of moles. And in this case, we're given that we have 5.65 grams of calcium carbonate. And because of that, we need to convert that to moles. So our first step in our conversion is to take one mole of calcium carbonate divided by 100.09 grams of calcium carbonate. Our units of grams of calcium carbonate will cancel out, giving us a unit of mole. We can then do the second thing that's done in every stoichiometry problem. Remember, every stoichiometry problem must have a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. In this case, moles of calcium carbonate to moles of carbon dioxide, the gas that we're looking for. But we're going to stop here. because We're not interested in how many grams of carbon dioxide we have. We're interested in what's the volume of carbon dioxide. And because it's a gas, we're going to be using the ideal gas law to help finish this off. We now have three of the four variables. 
we have our moles of carbon dioxide. In the question, we were given our temperature and our pressure. So we can plug into the ideal gas law and see that we're going to get 1.75 atmospheres times the volume, our unknown, equals 0.0564 moles times the gas constant of 0.08206 atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. I've left the units off. And then 298 Kelvin. When we solve this out, we will get our volume of 0.788 liters, which now the question is done because it's asking for the volume. When doing gas stoichiometry, this basic format is what we're going to follow. If you're dealing with a gas, you're, you're going to replace what we had done before as a gram to mole conversion with the ideal gas law itself. If we were given the gas and asked how many grams of carb calcium carbonate, we would just basically do the reverse of this. We would have done the ideal gas law first, done our mole to mole conversion, and converted to grams. So wherever you're dealing with a gas, if you need to convert from or to moles, you will be using the ideal gas law.